What is up and welcome back. I have a horrific recap of some of last week's horror news for you, but first. I want to play a game. Your question is, what actress was revealed to be one of the killers in Scream 4? Leave your answer in the comments. Alright, let's go back in time a bit to Sunday, October 22nd of last week, which brought sad news to fans of American McGee's Alice games. At the end of it all, the owners of the IP, Electronic Arts, made clear that they have no desire to see the Alice franchise continued by me or anyone else for me to continue trying to develop the concept after I have been clearly told that they are not interested in this is tantamount to my trying to steal their IP, something which I obviously have no interest in doing. Man, that sucks to hear. And if anyone deserves hate for this decision, it's EA, who has a track record of bad business in the gaming industry. Here's one for the readers. Gruesome Magazine's Dave Dreher brought to my attention a new book in the works inspired by Stephen King's The Stand. Many writers are attached to the upcoming project, along with the best-selling horror author who will write the introduction for the book titled The End of the World as We Know It, Tales of Stephen King's The Stand. No word yet on when the book will be available to read though. And then came Monday of last week, October 23rd, and Deadline announced that Mike Flanagan's latest Stephen King adaptation, The Life of Chuck, had added more big names to the cast. Chiwetel Ejiofor, Karen Gillan, and Jacob Tremblay will join Mark Hamill and Tom Hiddleston for a tri-story film about Charles Chuck Krantz, his death, and Chuck's life growing up in a quote-unquote haunted house. No release date just yet, but 2024 and 2025 are not out of the question. Also last Monday came word that A Quiet Place, day one, had moved to a new release date. Expect The Quiet Place spinoff to now release in the summer of 2024 on June 28th. Zombie with a Shotgun 2 is getting reloaded. The film's creator, Hilton Ariel Ruiz, made the announcement last Monday that Zombie with a Shotgun 2, reloaded, is ramping up for a launch on Indiegogo. For those interested, visit Zombie with a Shotgun 2 Reloaded's campaign page and see how you can support the independent project today. Tuesday, October 24th of last week, saw the release of The Exorcist Believer on Video On Demand. Those too afraid, or those that heard the bad reviews, can now enjoy it from home, mobile, probably even pirated somewhere. How many of you were waiting for the pirated version? Raise of hands, I know you're out there. Hey, heads up for all you horror collectors. Tuesday of last week, I found out about two auctions going live in November. One, which will allow you to get your hands on horror memorabilia from films like A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Shining, and Jason X. The second auction will feature props, outfits, and more from Mike Flanagan's latest Netflix hit, The Fall of the House of Usher. Check out PropStoreAuction.com for more details. Speaking of outfits, these outfits are digital and became available for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game last Tuesday, October 24th, and you can own it all for $41. Don't own the game? Pick it up now while it's still on sale and before the game goes back up to its original $40 price tag. NECA made Halloween fans very happy last Tuesday with the release of their Tom Atkins Dr. Dan Chalice figure from Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. The figure has only been available once before at the Halloween 45 Years of Terror event, but it is now available to buy on NECA's website. Dion Taylor's Blackula reboot could see release as early as next year around Halloween, according to an article from Variety. The reboot was announced back in 2021 and will pick up where 1973's Scream Blackula Scream left off. I can't be the only one anxiously awaiting word of Pam Greer's casting, right? It was Wednesday, October 25th of last week when more big names joined Mike Flanagan's The Life of Chuck. Big names include Matthew Lillard, Heather Lagenkamp, Mia Sarah, David Dasmalkian, and Violet McGraw. A couple Flanagan familiars such as Kate Siegel, Carl Lundley, Rahul Cohill, and Samantha Sloyan will star as well. The Halloween update for Amnesia The Bunker, including Shell Shock mode and Custom mode, became available to players last Wednesday, with new features that are sure to make gameplay harder, scarier, and now custom built to how you want to play. Amnesia The Bunker is currently available to play on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation 4. Last Wednesday, Redditor AwClark89 gave the horror community its first look at a very telling Terrifier 3 poster, and it looks like Terrifier 3 is going to be a Christmas film. The new poster shows Art the Clown looking like Santa, for what should be a very merry, blood-soaked third film. Thank you to Clark 89 and his awesome theater-working buddy for this horrific peek at Terrifier 3. Last Wednesday wasn't all good news though, with word that Postmortem with Mick Garris would be ending this year. The announcement made on the highly popular podcast's latest episode with Halloween director John Carpenter. Postmortem comes to an end after seven years, and this horror fan is just happy to have been along for the ride. Thanks, Mick. Last Thursday, October 26th, was an exciting day for Alan Wake fans, with the release of Alan Wake 2 knocking at our doors. 
Those behind the game were excited to upload a launch trailer to YouTube, and I must say, after watching it, I was more excited for the release of Alan Wake 2 than I ever was before. Part 1 of Chucky Season 3 came to an end last week, with Part 2's release date still up in the air for next year. But that doesn't mean horror's favorite killer doll and friends are gone completely. A new promo hit YouTube last Thursday, showing fans what's in store when Part 2 of Chucky's third season premieres sometime next year. Production continues to move forward on Hocus Pocus 3, and last Thursday, the film's writer, Jen D'Angelo, sat down with Entertainment Weekly saying the Sanderson sisters will be back, along with the return of Hannah Wadingham's Mother Witch, who popped up in Hocus Pocus 2. Friday, October 27th is the day all FNAF fans have been waiting for, when Five Nights at Freddy's, starring Matthew Lillard and Josh Hutcherson, hits theaters, finally, and seeing those animatronics come to life was awesome. Another notable release is Suitable Flesh, a Lovecraftian horror tale from Joe Lynch that stars Heather Graham and horror's very own Barbara Crampton. Looking to spice up your Halloween? Check out Suitable Flesh today. A video game adaptation of Barbarian is in the works from New Regency Pictures and Diversion 3. Based on Zack Krieger's 2022 film, Barbarian will be a narrative single-player experience that will release to consoles and PC upon its completion. Running through the dark with Mother and Hopper suit is going to be absolutely terrifying. Mortal Kombat 1 was in the news last Friday, and not in a good way. There's been some backlash over MK1's Halloween fatality content, with many voicing their displeasure over the $10 price tag. I have to agree with the disgruntled on this one. There is no way that the Halloween fatality should be $10. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, I feel, is also guilty of this all too common price inflation of DLC and add-ons. Does this crap upset you? Let me hear it in the comments. That's not all the video game news from last Friday though. Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord released a few days ago, available now on PlayStation VR 2 and MetaQuest. Alright, enough with the video game news. How about some big movie news? Scott Derrickson took to Twitter to say The Black Phone 2 is in the works and scheduled to release summer of 2025. My interest is definitely peaked. Joe Hill has to be on board, I'm certain of that. And I'm curious to see if Ethan Hawke's Grabber will make a comeback in some way. I don't know how, but in some way. Moving on, bloody disgusting Screambox made horror history last Friday when it was the first streaming service to offer Charles Martin Smith's Trick or Treat. The heavy metal Halloween flick with the killer soundtrack and starring Ozzy Osbourne and Gene Simmons can now be watched on the premier horror streaming service, Screambox. Friday means the release of new films and series, and here are some horror treats that just released, including Five Nights at Freddy's, which released in theaters, Sister Death, releasing on Netflix, Suitable Flesh, in select theaters and video on demand. The Enfield Poltergeist on Apple TV Plus. The Nun 2, available now on Max. When Evil Lurks on Shudder. On to the weekend which started yesterday, Saturday, October 28th. We saw amazing numbers for Five Nights at Freddy's, the film bringing in $68 million so far. The film was meh to me, but seeing Chica and Cupcake brought to life, the others too, especially Foxy. It was an early Halloween treat for sure. Well, that's all the horror news from last week I have for you. But before I sign off, I want to play a game. The question was, what actress was revealed to be one of the killers in Scream 4? It was Emma Roberts. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next week.